Hey, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly photo chats. So today I want to talk about a lot of people have told me I need to try folders. The folding cameras that shoot 120 are some special, special cameras. And I was just at a yard sale and I asked, hey, do you have anything photographic? You know, like old cameras or books or darkroom. And they said, no, oh wait, maybe. And then they went inside the garage and pulled out this. And they said, how about 20? And I said, that sounds good. Case doesn't quite stay attached. That's okay, leave that in the car. But it's a big, a pretty simple Voigtlander. Does it have a name on it? It's a Voigtlander with a color scope R, 80 millimeter F3.5 lens. This came in both the 4.5 and the 3.5. And it didn't always have the scope R lens. And this is like their best lens. And you don't really want anything too much wider than a 3.5 on a 120 camera because focus becomes so shallow. And this does not have a rangefinder in it. This has a focus scale that you just have to guess. And the one thing they say it's nice about this is you can have it at any position and you can still close the camera. Some cameras, the way they were built with how the lens moved in or out, you had to have the camera lens all the way focused to infinity so at its shortest level so that you could close it. But this one doesn't have to have that situation. And I just picked it up, so I just loaded it. And so I'm just getting started with it. But I love having a 120 camera. I can't fit a Rolleiflex in my pocket, but this I can. And it's got shutter speeds up to a 500th of a second. Is that right? Let me find them. Yep, it has sh shutters up to a five hundredth of a second. It stops down to f16 and it opens up to 3.5. You can do anything with that. I typically shoot 120. I like going out on a sunny day and then whether I'm shooting into the sun or with sun on the subject. I just like to keep the camera at 250 at f11. That's like the magic combination that it'll overexpose some of the bright things, but it will bring out shadows. I can always keep my shadows. So 250 F11 is like the magic number for 400 speed IS, ISO HP5 black and white. And if I'm shooting F11, my focus is a little bit easier to hit. Like I can tell right now, there's about four feet between the camera I'm talking to and this camera. And it's not really hard to put it on four feet, I just did it. And if I were shooting the window behind you, that's about six feet. So I just put it at six feet. And as long as it's close, it's got a couple of indexes that if you put it at, you know, the 12 foot mark, everything from six feet to infinity will be in focus if you're at F11. And that's the kind of thing where it's like, I wanna be able to have a camera that I can precisely focus, but since it doesn't have a rangefinder in it, and you can always tell if it doesn't have a rangefinder, it only has one window. If it has two windows, one of them is the rangefinder window. So if you're ever looking at these and you see one, that's the situation with one or two windows. One is the rangefinder. But that's okay with me because it's a fast 80 millimeter 3.5 and it's extra small. This folds up so small, it easily fits inside my front jeans pocket. More so than a Leica M3 would. And I'm carrying with me a 120 camera. I'm carrying a camera with a really nice leather case that if I could get the bottom to reattach it, you know, it's got a nice little case. But the idea is these cameras, because of these leather cases, were usually kept pretty pristine. The gentleman who was selling it had this inside of another bag and there were a bunch of filters and other things in there, all for 20 bucks. In fact, the big thing he said most is, I'll give it to you for $20, but you've got to take all of it. I don't want to have accessories left around. No, that's okay. I'll take those. You can find those deals. It's easy to open up. It's easy to have set, ready to go, take pictures. You could leave it set at that 10 to 12 mark on the foot scale. And now pretty much everything from six feet to infinity is going to be pretty good if you're shooting stop down. So keep the camera 250 F11. You can use it almost like a point and shoot for street. And then critically focused when you see somebody you want to photograph and do a portrait of. If I'm doing a portrait of this camera, 
I'll put it on four feet. I won't let depth the field cover it. I'll tell the camera where we're at. But if we're doing street, put it at that 10 to 12 mark. It's like 11 feet is what it's setting it at. And you're ready to go. And it's a great simple folder that fits in your pocket. They don't have to cost a lot of money. When you go to yard sales, ask, do you have anything photographic? You would be surprised how many times I get first pick on the things that they weren't going to sell. There is no photographic gear out at the sale. And then they go in and they find something. And I get first pick on it because they weren't even going to bring it out and sell it. They didn't think anybody wanted it. And they assume there's no film available. They assume nobody would want it. We've passed the era of digital cameras. Now we have phones. Nobody thinks to even buy a camera anymore. And here this camera comes up for $20. So you can find these deals. And if you're looking for a folder, this is the little Voigtlander. I think it's a Perkio is what I read. And if you are looking for a great pocketable camera, look up those small folders. They're really good cameras and good lenses. A lot of great build quality back in the day and great little cases, except for they sometimes tear apart. All right, that's today's photography talk. Hey, if you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, hit the Patreon. Thanks to all of my supporters. And I'll be back next time. We'll talk more photography. As always, here's the good light.